Are the good folks at Apple turning off your pro audio equipment? Turns out there's a pretty good chance they might be. Let's check it out. Hey guys, it's Steve from Featherlight Studio, and in this video, we're talking about rather Apple is turning off your pro audio hardware. And I don't mean this as a euphemism or a metaphor. I don't mean software or applications or things like that. I mean physical hardware. Is Apple turning off your actual studio hardware? Now, we've been following the story for quite some time, as a lot of other studios have as well. The support for Firewire-based products have ended some time ago. And if you are a user of any of the new OSs, specifically Ventura and the brand new one Sonoma, then this directly affects you if you have any prior Firewire equipment. We're gonna be taking a much closer look at Apple's recent announcement of their discontinuation of the Firewire protocol support. Now, this is different than not actively supporting something, meaning they're still taking service calls and support calls and things like this. This actually looks at a much bigger and wider implication industry-wide, especially in the audio industry. So if you have older Firewire-based products like audio interfaces, then this directly affects you as it does us and so many other kinds of recording facilities that still use that incredibly well-made and dependable audio hardware that uses the Firewire standard. So a little bit of background first, just for context, Apple started phasing out its Firewire-based hardware somewhere between 2008 and 2012, with some of its products like the 13-inch MacBook Pro and the displays being available as late as 2016. In addition, many audio-based manufacturers still had interfaces in their product lines that still used Firewire-based ports and protocols. Companies like Universal Audio and RME and Mark of the Unicorn and Mackie and a host of other manufacturers. Fast forward a few years as the emerging Thunderbolt standard 1, 2, and 3 starts to emerge and Firewire-based products are still usable because they're backwards compatible with the protocol of Thunderbolt. So even if the drivers specifically for those audio interfaces are not functional, if the devices themselves are class compliant, it means that all of those inputs and outputs on the audio interface still show up in the Mac core audio environment. This creates an entire cottage industry for adapters to go from Firewire to Thunderbolt 1 and then from Thunderbolt 1 to Thunderbolt 2 and so on. And companies like OWC begin to develop computer docking stations that allow a one cable solution from the docking station to modern computers like Mac Studios, giving us Firewire capability over the existing Thunderbolt line. So even though Apple's networking development and active support for the user base for Firewire has long since stopped, the KEXT or kernel extensions that make it possible for the Firewire devices to talk to the core audio system in Apple-based products is still left in the code of its modern-day operating systems all the way up to and including Monterey. All right, so the long and short of it is really this. What we're really talking about is class-compliant devices. So if you have older Firewire interfaces where the specific drivers for those software mixer applications may not be functional, if that device is class compliant, like many of the modern day USB audio interfaces, those inputs and outputs will still show up in Apple's core audio system, which means they'll still show up and be completely available in all of your digital audio workstation applications as well. Fast forward a bit more and Apple officially releases Mac OS Ventura, but in this version, there is one gigantic change for the audio industry. This is the first official Mac OS in recent Apple history where the few lines of code that allowed that communication for Firewire devices to still communicate with Apple's core audio system have physically been removed from Apple's OS. Now, this was developed by Apple itself, so it's a bit ironic. It was developed in the early 80s and 90s along with other companies like Sony and Panasonic, and it quickly became the de facto audio industry standard for recording. It was dependable, it was solid, and people used it seven days a week just like we do. But the advent of corporate greed and eventual squabbles over licensing fees, as well as the new emerging standard of USB and faster Firewire-based protocols like Thunderbolt, started to pave the way for Apple actually backing off of its support for its own Firewire-based standard. And first, I want to start off by saying I am obviously an Apple fan. We use a ton of their products here at the studio. You know, we've got a bunch of them and we've relied on them day in, day out, seven days a week, running a full-time recording studio and their products have been dependable 
and they have been consistent. So this isn't an Apple bashing video at all. It's simply an exploration into the real world ramifications of what the end of life support actually looks like on a product, or in this case, a much more important protocol. So for those of you that have used in the past or still have active pieces of FireWire gear, specifically FireWire audio interfaces, up until now, you've been able to use them easily because they've still been a part of the Apple core audio system. If you had class compliant gear, you could still use that all the way up to Monterey. And its newest OSs, specifically everything from Ventura on, so Ventura and the brand new Sonoma, those OSs will have those bits of code, and we're talking about incredibly small bits of code, several lines only, will actually be physically removed from the OS operating system code line. And that ends that ability for it to work in the core audio environment. So long story short, it simply means you won't be able to use your products, not because they don't work or they're not good quality. They're simply gonna get turned off. This is a surprisingly, if not shockingly, tone deaf move from a company the size of Apple, especially one that so heavily advertises a climate aware and global based footprint. By simply removing a few lines of code in the latest operating systems, Apple is effectively condemning hundreds of thousands of pieces of audio gear to the landfill. It seems inconceivable that a company the size of Apple hasn't thought this all the way through yet, but by making all of this perfectly functional gear obsolete, Apple will do more damage to the environment than all of their climate conscious and globally aware programs combined. And even if some of those hundreds of thousands of pieces of perfectly good audio gear are actually responsibly recycled, it still doesn't make any more sense from a sustainability point of view, any more than buying a brand new TV or car every few months does. So for those of you that are using USB stuff and smaller home interfaces, yeah, you're probably not gonna be terribly affected by this. Or will you? Think about that for a second. If Apple can drop something as important as simply the support to allow a, a protocol to continue to work, they can do it just as easily on things that are slowly getting far and farther out of date. So if you think Firewire is so old that no one really cares about it again, take a real close look at USB, specifically the older USB standards like one and two. There is a huge amount of audio interfaces that still use the USB 2.0 interface. And if you think that is completely immune from the Apple chopping block, you got another thought coming. So what can we as musicians and creators and producers and engineers actually do about this? What are we actually left with? Well, the first option is go out and buy all brand new gear every time a company or a product or a service decides they need to boost productivity or quarterly sales. And while this may be the preferred method of most manufacturers, few people are in the position to rebuy all their studio equipment every time a company or a service decides to stop supporting your favorite piece of gear or software application. And it's by far and away the least sustainable of all the options. The second option is a bit more realistic for most people, and that's simply don't update your operating system past Monterey. While you won't have access to new features or security updates, this does allow you complete functionality with your existing older gear. Now, if you buy a new computer, anything in the last year, that'll probably be completely out of your hands as Apple is probably gonna be shipping that with at least Ventura and probably the newest OS Sonoma. And while it is technically possible to downgrade to an older OS, that process is not for the faint of heart. We did that here on our Mac Studio when we bought it. And though we were able to downgrade from Ventura back to Monterey, it gets more difficult with each new OS Apple releases. The third method involves a core audio hack, which attempts to copy the original FireWire code in previous operating systems and paste it into Ventura and Sonoma. Some users with very specific hardware and computer combinations have reported limited success with this method. Other users have reported widespread system instability and it requires you to bypass Apple's system integrity protection program, which can cause instabilities in your system in addition. 
And just shy of rebuying all of your studio gear, including a high-end analog mix console and a complete set of converters to go along with that, to talk to your computer, which can run into the tens of thousands of dollars and much, much higher, is option number four. This would be trying to create a hybrid setup, which involves using your older Firewire-based gear with newer USB or Thunderbolt-driven gear. If your older Firewire-based gear was a larger mixing console setup that had individual recording outs or direct outs, you could use all the onboard preamps and possibly the EQ sections as well and then go into a more modern day USB or a Thunderbolt interface treating your old Firewire base gear as basically one gigantic 500 series rack. This isn't an ideal solution as it doesn't help people with smaller channel count interfaces and it still requires you to buy new gear to make your old gear work. So it is surprising, if not shocking, that a company the size of Apple with their global awareness and footprint and perspective of things, especially with their climate-based and sustainability-based programs, could be so tone-deaf about something that affects so much of our economy and of our climate landscape. So by removing just a few lines of computer code, Apple is basically condemning hundreds of thousands of pieces of audio equipment to the landfill thereby kind of nullifying almost all of their current climate and sustainability-based programs in the process. So it's, it's a shocking and surprising decision on their part, especially since it really doesn't involve anything from them. They're not actively supporting this and they haven't been. So by them actively removing the code is really the issue here. And it makes it so that the core audio communication protocol can no longer take place in their new OSs. I'd be curious to find out how many of you are actually affected by this directly, if you still use older pieces of firewire, not just for backup and for archiving, but for things like actual audio interfaces and, and audio work. So please leave that in the comments if you can. Hey, if you learned something more, if this was helpful in any way, please hit the subscription and notification bells. It really does help keep the channel going and it helps me make more videos like this. Stay safe, be creative, add something creative to the world. It could really use it. Take care. We'll catch you guys in the next video.